Hello and welcome to Wild West Garage. My name is Morgan and for those of you who have been here for a while you know about this project already but uh, for the new people I'm just going to tell you it's a 1950 Chevy pickup cab and uh, I've got all the rest of the doors and the fenders and everything over here. Uh, still don't have the, uh, the pickup bed yet but uh, that's, that will be coming. So um, it's been a while since I worked on this. Uh, so for those that uh, have been uh, coming here just to see me work on this truck, those that subscribed just to see me work on this truck, uh, I guess I have to apologize that I haven't, uh, you haven't been seeing much of it lately. Um, you know, I, I do have a shop here and you know, anytime you have a shop, you always have people asking you to do work for them. So, uh, you know, I have some longtime uh, friends that have been bringing their vehicles to me for for years. Um, even some very loyal people that that came back uh, after 14 years of um, ignoring them, basically, and just uh, working at another job. So. So these people have come back to me now, and um, so I don't want to turn them away at the door. They've been pretty loyal to me, so you know, they kept my, kept my uh, kept uh, groceries in my cupboards and food on the table, that all that kind of stuff. The bills paid for me, so um, so you know, I have to fit them in, and you know, it's been three or four months now since I've worked on this cab. But anyways. Um, I'm not necessarily going to be uh, working on this cab in this video, but um, it's uh, and one of the things that's kind of stalled me on this is um, I wanted to um, I wanted to de-rust the cab before I did any more work on it, and it, it is pretty rusty, like it's a lot of surface rust, and you've seen the, the rust that I've cut out of it and repaired. Um, so um, yeah, so I just want to de-rust it, and I was uh, thinking of uh, trying to buy a product called uh, Rust 911. Um, there's a fellow by the name of Ray Shaleen. He's uh, out in uh, the eastern U.S. state somewhere, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. I can't even say that word, Massachusetts. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the Boston area, I think. He's had quite a lot of success with that product uh, using a spray method. So um, he cleaned the whole underside of a Cadillac, a 50s, early 50s Cadillac. He just set up a system where he could spray the stuff on the underside of the vehicle and it really did an amazing job. Um, so um, I was going to try and do that, but it's just so hard to get that product in, in Canada. There are no Canadian distributors for that product in Canada, and the shipping is pretty crazy. And it ended up by, just from what I could gather, that it was going to probably cost me about, just for the product alone, about, <clears throat> probably be about $2,000 just to get enough product to, get this thing cleaned up. So anyways, I've decided to use electrolysis to do that. And uh, so I'm just experimenting right now. Right now I've got a piece in a garbage can with a battery charger hooked up to it. And it's looking pretty good. So um, I'll show you what I'm doing with that. All right. So here's the setup anyways. I've had this on set on low, 12 volt low, for about 15 hours now. And obviously it's it removed some rust because it's all floating on the top of the water here now. So my uh, solution in this is just, uh, it's just water. And uh, a lot of guys on uh, YouTube and just on the web in general, um, they're using, uh, washing soda as a additive to the water to make it conduct better I guess 
Uh, I didn't have any washing soda, so um, I just threw a couple handfuls of salt in there. Um, like I said, this is a this is an experiment. Um, seems to be working, and uh, I'm gonna pull it out here and uh, give it a little pressure wash and see what it looks like. Well, there's definitely something uh, happening here. That's what it looked like down here before, obviously. Um, I did pressure wash this uh, before I stuck it in the, the can. I don't know if you can, you can kind of see. Uh, I guess you can't really see it anymore, but I guess this is salt here. Um, yeah, you could see it, it, it cleaned it up quite a bit before I, uh, I mean, it still looked rusty, but it uh, knocked off a lot of it, probably just dirt and stuff. Anyways, I'm going to give it a blast here and see what what it comes out at. Well, I do see some shiny metal there, some clean bare metal. And uh, actually, I kind of like the way it looks right now, but it's kind of neat. And you can see I, I, I pressure washed back from the affected zone here, just to show you how much better it even looks. Well, not I guess it's not really that much better, but you can see there's a lot of stuff that does come off. It's just pressure washing there, and this is the electrolysis section. So, um, yeah, I think it's uh, it's definitely working. You know, it's pretty heavily rusted, so I mean, it took many years to get to this stage, so it's gonna take a while to get back to shiny metal. So I'm just gonna throw it back in there for the rest of the day and. See what it looks like later on. Just wanted to show you my, uh, I don't know what you think you guys call this a cathode. And uh, it's it's a piece of galvanized ducting. And it's, it's staying really clean. You see uh, other videos where uh, this part gets really grungy. So the stuff isn't sticking to it. So I don't know if this is a bad thing to have a, a galvanized cathode or electrode or whatever you want to call it in there. Um, so there's some kind of green, greenish goop in there. And I wonder if that's being caused by the zinc. Uh, anyways. Um, saves me cleaning that up so I got I've got lots of this stuff my dad was in the ventilation business so I mean if it starts to get grungy or look look bad I'll just throw it away and put a new piece in anyways uh, if anybody knows what what's going on here and what's causing that green or if it's dangerous toxic or whatever I guess zinc you can get zinc poisoning but if it's making any poisonous gases or anything, let me know. I'm not a scientist, so I don't know about these things. So I just know that this is working. All right, it's been about 23 hours now in the, in the tub. So let's see what happens when I hit it with the water. Doesn't seem really much changed uh, since, you know, the first time I washed it. So, uh, I'm getting a little discouraged here. But anyways, I'm going to try. I, I picked up some uh, washing soda today. i throw a bit of that in there. And maybe that will improve it. I don't know. We'll see. So my anode has uh, this kind of greenish slime on it. You can see it's just getting rained off. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse that off too. That, you know, I'm sure that's inhibiting uh, the electrical path, right? A little bit, so I'll clean that up this time as well. So this is 12, uh, no, not 12 hours, uh, over 40 hours now. Um, yeah, just, just around 40 hours. So, doesn't look much different than after.
after 12 hours. So, give it a pressure wash, see what we got. So here it is after a little bit of uh, wire wheeling, just a wire wheel and a drill. So you can see it's very, it's very pitted, so the wire doesn't get down into the pit. And I did a little bit, little bit over here just to, as a comparison on this area that's not hasn't been in the bath. So you can see, I mean, there's, you know, there's, it is cleaning it. It's just uh, not what I expected, and I'm, I'm thinking that this is very, this is a small part, you know, compared to a cab, <laughs> which is my ultimate goal is to de-rust that cab. So I'm kind of getting discouraged here. I don't know if this is the, the right way to do it. So, um, anyways, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to hit this with a little bit of acid now and see how that cleans up. So after you know a couple of, a couple of applications of acid, some rinsing off. I didn't let the acid sit on there for longer than maybe five minutes. Uh, so yeah, it's. Uh, that's really brightened it up you know it's you know it's pretty tough with all the, with this pitting you can't get down into the pitting I mean the acid goes down in there but uh, certainly uh, wire brushes and whatnot so I so I hit it with uh, I hit it with um, the acid and I did it over there too and then I went over it with the wire wheel again or the wire brush and then I did another coat of acid. And you see down here that I haven't worked on that area as much as this area up here. Um, actually, I don't think I did any wire wheeling down here. I, maybe I made a couple of passes back and forth on it, but not as much as I did up here. So maybe that's kind of the way it's got to go. It's got to be like uh, in the electrolysis tank for you know, 24 to 48 hours, and then a little bit of acid treatment, some wire wheeling, and, and uh, you can get, get, get it cleaned up. So I, I'm gonna put this back in now and see what happens to this spot that, that's all cleaned up here. So this is working. It's just not kind of what I expected. Maybe I expected too much. So, you know, this, you can see, like, we're coming up on shiny metal here. This is without doing any abrasion or any additional, you know, treatments on it other than the electrolysis. And you can see, like, when this was all wet, it, lo it all looked black. So I thought that this was kind of just the final stage, but you, you can see there's actually rusty looking stuff here. And, uh, you know, this is pretty heavily pitted metal. So, um, you know, maybe it just needs... To be in there longer or I just need to you know I did you know I didn't have the washing soda at first I just put some salt in there um, I don't know maybe if I just go with straight um, straight washing soda it might work better I mean it's just uh, you just have to add some minerals to the water so it conducts electricity right so I don't know if maybe this you know, Maybe the salt's turning this black. I, I don't know. I mean, I've, I've seen other guys do it and it turns black too, so I don't think that's really the case. So, you know, and then, of course, this area that I <clears throat> did some work on. And what's, what's interesting here is, so I did this work on this area here, and it was nice and shiny. And then when I put it back, you see this line here? That's the, that was the water line, right? So everything that was under the water has flash rusted on me. But the part that was out above the water uh, didn't in this area anyways, but up here it did. So I don't know what's going on there. Maybe I needed to neutralize that, and I may have rinsed it off really well, but maybe I need to neutralize it with some uh, baking soda or something. But anyways, so that it's interesting that this part so this was out at, at three hours later or so. And when it came out, it was nice and shiny, but just when I dried it off, it did this flash rusting thing. And it's not down there either. So it's, it's kind of weird, like, 
So anyways, uh, I mean, I guess if I'm going to use this process, maybe that's just what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to cook it in the with the electrolysis for like two or three days. Pull it out, wire brush it, squirt some acid on it, and to get it to, to, to that. Like that's, so if I go with some uh, like phosphoric acid now, like a metal prep, it'll clean this up and make it look nice and maybe that's kind of the, what I have to do what I'm what I'm faced with so you know some of the rust like on the dash it's not so bad the floor is really pitted there's actually some holes in it so uh, and then the back here even along the seam it's really bad and there's some holes here too so uh, you know I mean the rest of it isn't so bad, like it's just kind of surfacey rust. It's not pitted rust, so I'm, I'm thinking that this will come off pretty nice. So it's just anywhere that's kind of pitted that seems to have trouble. But anyways, it's going to take a lot longer to to clean this because it's a you know it's that's only like not even that's a foot and a half, like a 1.5 square feet kind of thing, and this is. Like, I don't know, thousand square feet? No, it'd be a hundred square feet. So it's a hundred times more than this. So it's going to take a hundred times more energy and time, I guess, or one or the other to, to clean it. So, so if this took uh, 40 hours, 43 hours So that's almost two days times 10 20 days it would take it would take to clean this or Or more power I guess I don't know so um, <laughs> If anybody has done this before on this largest scale Let me know I'd be interested in talking to you Look at this shaggy mess. That's just in three hours of it being in there since I cleaned it off last. Science. Look at that crud. Look at that edge, just disappearing. All right, so that was interesting. Um, to be continued, I, uh, I just wanted to try that. Um, it's going to help me make some decisions on how I'm going to do this or approach this. So uh, I may end up just sending it to uh, a stripping company at this point and just, uh, you know, uh, uh, well, I mean, I'm going to have to talk to the guy that owns the truck. Let's put it that way. So um, anyway, uh, maybe he wants to buy $3,000 worth of chemicals. I don't know. Either way, it's going to cost him. So we'll see. So thanks for watching. And, uh, you know, maybe this has uh, ignited somebody's uh, curiosity in trying to do this themselves. And maybe you're going to go out and do that and try it out. Uh, I think on a small scale, it probably would be okay, like for smaller parts. But I'm not sure if it's going to work on this you know entire cab so anyways thanks for watching and see me next time thanks bye